Hey everybody, it is Daniel here for Mobile Syrup, and uh, today I have a continuation of our Sony Ericsson Xperia Play and Xperia Arc hardware overview. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the software improvements that Sony Ericsson has graced the uh, hardware with, and uh, this is running Android 2.3.2 Gingerbread, and first of all we're just going to take a look at that software version over here so you see in the settings menu it's largely the same as any existing Android menu except for this Sony Ericsson tab on the top and um, you see here you can adjust uh, your connectivity so when you connect your USB cable to the phone whether it launches the PC companion which is uh, a sync program that uh, is separate from the device and it's loaded on your Windows machine or you can do media transfer or mass storage uh, this is very similar to what you have with the HTC Sync on an HTC device as well you can set your tethering and portable hotspot here um, you also have settings download that would include uh, we included with a sim card so what you do is uh, if you're having any issues getting APN settings for data tra uh, data transfer over the network you just uh, download those settings straight from the uh, Rogers server and you get that and any usage info you can actually send anonymous usage info to Sony Ericsson and it claims that it helps improve service uh, that's up to you so everything else seems fairly stock um, you have your display here uh, you, you can turn on and off the mobile Bravi engine. Uh, I have not tested out the difference in battery life. I can't imagine it would be that big. But what this does is it enhances photo and video image quality. That's um, largely uh, when you're playing um, high definition video. It adds some filters to make it sharper, to make it uh, to increase the contrast and color saturation. It does look pretty good and um, I will show you that in a second. Um, next, there is nothing on this device right now um, in terms of internal storage. I have not loaded any apps on it. As you can see, out of the box you have about 288 megabytes free. Not a lot of space. That's akin to kind of the first generation of Android devices like the Nexus One that only had about 100 megabytes of free storage and that necessitated in Android 2.2 Froyo Google adding the ability to transfer apps onto your SD card. Now that is included here and in uh, the 8 megabyte uh, micro SD card uh, there is a lot of space that's free but most apps that you download from the market will be stored on your internal storage so just be aware of that. Um, now most games for example are downloaded in small portions onto the internal storage and then once you get into the game itself then it'll download a large amount onto your um, onto the SD card so don't worry too much about storage uh, you have your stock Android um, uh, keyboard here this is not the gingerbread keyboard we would have preferred something along the lines of gingerbread and I'll show you the keyboard in a second but one of the options here is uh, to vibrate on key press which is nice and uh, you can have it learn new words when you uh, add a new word to the dictionary and quick fixes etc which is nice and helpful and the auto correct on here is pretty good you also have Chinese and Japanese keyboards if you so desire so about phone this is not the newest version of gingerbread since this phone was announced uh, Sony had sorry Google has released Android 2.3.3 but that's just some updates to do with the uh, near field communication uh, capabilities for gingerbread and uh, this phone does not have an NFC chip inside of it so that will not be of interest to you now um, in gingerbread there is this new menu here when you go into uh, what's using your battery and you can tell not only what uh, what services have been using your battery but also um, this nice graph here on what exactly has been using the battery and how long it's been on battery and uh, this is very helpful for you to um, determine what is squeezing the life out of your device so that's just a look at the settings here um, 
first of all, you'll see here that this is the new Mediascape and Timescape um, widgets, and these widgets are much smoother in use than what they used to be on uh, the X10. Uh, at the same time, these uh, images are a little bit low resolution for me, and uh, the widget itself, while very, very useful in getting, obtaining information, doesn't help you all that much when you're trying to interact with it. For example, it just takes you right to the uh, mobile website as opposed to allowing you to reply um, in line. So what you can do though is uh, say you want to update your status, that will take you over here and you have the ability to update your Twitter, Facebook, and uh, a number of other services that I will show you in a moment. So you can see performance is really good, uh, but again, if you don't want to use it at all, you just drag it right down there and you saw that cool animation for the widget, you get it right back using uh, the Timescape widget right over here. So again, you can select your source, Timescape will consolidate all of them, you can have calls, only Facebook, only your SMS messages, or only Twitter. The next screen here included is the uh, music widget. You click on that, it brings up the new music player, it operates in both portrait and landscape mode. It's very attractive. Uh, the sound on this device is pretty good coming from the one speaker at the bottom. Uh, one of the nice things about this is also when you see an artist here, for example, Miss Carada, Miss Carada, excuse me if I mispronounce your uh, name, you can click on this infinity symbol here and it will find online content about the currently playing artist and that's usually from YouTube and then you can just click on that and it will take you right into the YouTube app. The new uh, Mediascape widget is also really nice. Um, it allows you to scroll through your pictures and your uh, video here. Um, there are a couple included videos on this device as well as some beautiful photos that are meant to show off the screen. You can see a photo like this for example. Now this uh, Snapdragon 8255 processor, it is a single core processor and uh, the Adreno 205 uh, GPU inside here is uh, now well used in many devices. This is pretty much the same internals as the Desire HD. Um, the performance is excellent on here. You're not going to notice much slowdown. That being said, the overall performance is not going to be as great as it is on a Tegra 2 dual core processor or one of the upcoming Samsung Galaxy S2 devices. Um, but for what you're going to use this for, it's it's an excellent device. So as I showed you, uh, this is another widget, it just consolidates your media. Um, some of the nicer animations here, you see when you're moving it around, it kind of dances a little, has a little bit of a wave when you want to get rid of it. You see the little trash can over there, that's a nice animation. So little touches like that Sony has added. Um, a little, another uh, little known feature is if uh, you pinch to zoom anywhere or sorry, if you pinch in anywhere on the desktop, it will show you all of your widgets. And that way, say I want to turn off Wi-Fi, I can just touch that and it'll take me right to the widget itself. And then I can do that or I can turn off auto brightness. This is a customizable launcher. For example, you can hold this down and uh, take it to the desktop. Media will show you one of these uh, three icons in your gallery, you have your music player and uh, what's nice is, is an included FM radio. You do have to have headphones plugged in for this to work, however, um, it does work nicely, I can attest to that. Uh, messaging, the app's pretty simple. You add a recipient here, so uh, say I want to send a message to my friend Scrody McBoogerballs, um, you just tap on him brings it up. This uh, keyboard looks very similar to the Froyo keyboard that was built into Android 2.2 um, 
but uh, gives you some nice autocorrect down here. Hey there, how are you doing? So, I do have a, a, a criticism here, is that it's, um, it's a multi-touch keyboard, but it it's very sensitive in the fact that if your finger is anywhere near another another key, it won't register the the key that you are trying to press. So you have to be very deliberate in your pressing. So hey there, how are you doing to today? Um, it does bring up a second menu here with all your symbols. You can get an alternate list of symbols and um, you also have a list of emoticons of course and you can jump right into your settings over here we're going to just jump into the app drawer uh, you can see that it's a horizontal app drawer very smooth your browser let's load up mobile syrup now this is over a Wi-Fi connection so it's probably going to be pretty fast and also we have now a uh, desktop uh, the, we have the mobile page here um, this is a video that I made and it's just going to show you the flash playback in browser It's a little bit jaggy. Um, I found that in in browser flash playing not the greatest. However, if um, if you do open it up in YouTube, that will play very nicely in high in high quality. And this is 720p. Let's load up another more intensive website. So you can see scrolling pretty smooth. Pinch to zoom works, you know, the same as, as most other, um, you know, second generation single core Android devices. A uh, little bit of lag on the pinch to zoom. Uh, scrolling is, is pretty good. Text resizes. Now, the Track ID app, I don't know if this will work, but this is kind of like Shazam. So you can play a song and then record it. Obviously, it has to go through the 3G data network, but um, you can record it and it will um, find that song and identify it for you. Uh, you also have Postcard here. And this is a nice uh, touchnote.com. This is a, a very well-known website where you can take a photo and then uh, you can actually create a real postcard and send it to a friend overseas or a family member uh, for her birthday, something like that. And you get a free credit uh, with the purchase of the phone. So that's kind of a nice, nice bonus. Moving along here, this uh, has some pretty decent video playback that's built in um, and let me just show you the gallery so this is the gallery that is included in all stock Android devices they've included a couple videos here I just want to show one of the moon so it just shows how absolutely clear and smooth the playback is So lastly, I just want to show you the uh, camera software. Now the 8 megapixel camera on here takes awesome, awesome photos. I'm really impressed with it. Um, one of the nice features is that you can actually set it to take photos just by tapping on the, the touch screen here. Um, you can also view your gallery just by dragging if you get it in the right place. So you can just drag your finger kind of like Windows Phone 7 back and forth like that. Uh, your settings are fairly rudimentary. 
you have the ability to detect smiles um, so that it won't take a photo unless somebody's smiling. Uh, this will detect a scene automatically and there are several scenes that it's pre-configured to detect. Now uh, you can take 8 megapixel 4x3 photos or 6 megapixel 16x9 photos. So the default resolution is not actually 8 megapixels, it's 6 megapixels but uh, that's not going to, you're not going to notice that much in difference. You can set a self timer and the flash is really good and it also has built in red eye reduction and that just delays the flash or it flashes twice. So menu here you have a little bit more depth you can um, set geotagging and you can turn off the shutter sound if you'd like not that much more really to talk about um, but it's a nice and usable interface and it's a nice improvement over the default so that's the arc the couple additions with the play obviously you're going to experience a very similar interface uh, this is a four inch screen so it's a little bit smaller once you get into the gaming portion of the play however once you open up the uh, gaming controls you go directly into this Xperia play experience a couple of the things you get your Rogers apps pre-installed you get your ringbacks your ringtones you get Rogers on demand you get uh, let's take a look at that actually So it says this service is only available to Rogers customers. This is very much like the Bell TV app that I've showed you in previous uh, videos, but Rogers is really trying to make a, a stab at this. So you do have to subscribe to content uh, because I'm on Wi Fi, it won't let me. But that's a quick view of the app itself. The camera app on the Play is actually the stock Android experience. But uh, unlike the Arc, this has a forward facing camera. So that's right there, that's the VGA camera. You switch it over and you have a 5 megapixel camera over here. What I don't quite understand and why uh, it seems like a very um, obvious oversight is this R button, this flap right here, cannot be configured to take photos, which is incredible to me because it's in the perfect position. Um, and, and although it doesn't have the dual, you know, half way down to focus, all way down to take the photo capability, I just think that that was uh, an easy oversight that they made there. So what I wanted to show you quickly was how Crash Bandicoot, which is a PS1 game, um, I'm going to continue my game. So this is a PS1 game that's pre-installed on the device. And it really, it looks great. Plays really well. So, let's just play for a second. So if you're looking for probably the best Android gaming experience out right now, um, you know that there are going to be 60 games available at launch on the 28th on Rogers. Uh, that includes custom Android apps that have been modified to play on the um, Xperia Play, or they are just uh, regular PS1 games that have been converted like this and uh, are available in the market. So. What I'm going to do now is just quickly take you into that market. So also here, what you can see is because I've gotten out of the 
the game, it's an ongoing service in the background and I can just jump right back into the game when I want to. Just like that. So there's really, unless you quit the game explicitly, it'll always be there just waiting for you to re resume, which is a really handy feature. So here you have your market and the first thing you'll notice is that the Sony Ericsson icon has taken over where My Apps usually is. So My Apps is now found in the context menu which is really disappointing and kind of greedy on the part of Sony Ericsson in my opinion um, because their offerings are not at all attractive right now. You have some extensions of the Timescape widget. For example, you can add your Foursquare, your LinkedIn um, on Verizon, you can have VZNet. Uh, so it's a little bit greedy in my opinion, but uh, you know what, they're entitled to it. So what we can see here, if I type in Xperia Play, It's going to search for all the games that have been modified for the play. And so far there are quite a few. So if you take a look here, Home Run Battle, it says Xperia Play Optimized. So some games will sell um, with um, in, a, in a universal package and some will sell on their own. So that's a quick look at the Xperia Arc and Xperia Play software. Um, one other thing that I can show you here, you can sort your apps by most used, by recently installed. You can see they readjust very smoothly. And um, I think that Sony Ericsson's done an excellent job here redeeming themselves. Uh, they they seem to have instead of trying to put together a product that does everything in a very mediocre way they focus their new OS on doing what Android does well and improving in a slight way where they can and overall it works much better than if uh, they try to take over the OS with their tweaks so I will save it for my full review, but I'm really impressed with what Sony Ericsson has done here. If you've gotten to the end of this of this uh, video, thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate it. Um, they have some really nice features that will differentiate them from the market. The form factors are beautiful, to say the least. The Bravia engine actually works. Um, I'm a little bit underwhelmed with the arc in terms of differentiation. I think the play is going to find a bigger market share in terms of uh, gamers. I think that the play is offering something that no other Android device is right now. And even though it's quite thick, it functions really, really well as a phone. And I think the added thickness does not take away from its overall... Um, use as a gaming device and a phone. So that's uh, a software overview of the gingerbread upgrade for the Xperia Arc and the Xperia Play. My name is Daniel and I thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want your 30 minutes back, I'm sorry. They're mine now and uh, hopefully I will redeem myself next time. So from my beautiful Cuban drum here, uh, this is Daniel signing out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, guys.